Let me be the first to wish all of you a very blessed Easter, this being the first Mass of Easter. I hope that after Mass, you will join us in Health to Hull for some refreshments and a little Easter egg hunt for the little ones. But before you leave church today, remember that there is a blessing of Easter baskets. If you have any Easter food or any sort of goodies, bring them to the communion rail and Father Le Toronto will bless them with a special Easter blessing. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, amen. We're all thinking about rest today, I think. Well, I think it starts out with Christ in the tomb. All is quiet there now. And I was thinking, though, when the Mass began today, after all of the other long ceremonies, how, how clear it is that even some of the servers are very much looking forward to getting rest. This ceremony of all the ceremonies of the year is the litmus test for endurance. Many times, try as hard as you want. You'll do perfectly for everything, but when you get for all the, the blessing of the fire and the, the exultet and the prophecies and the water, but we come to the simplest part that we've served a million times, and there are mistakes. That's okay, though. That's human nature. And it means that we've worked very hard and are just a little tired. God understands it all, and so must we. But the Mass is a beautiful thing. Today's entire ceremony has been most edifying, I think, starting with the blessing of the fire and then the spreading of the fire with, uh, with the reed, the triple candle we call it, symbolizing the Blessed Trinity, and then the beautiful exultet and all of the rest. I think that Our Lady on this day, this Saturday, she must have been at home quietly contemplating what had been going on over the last couple of days. So much has happened in that Holy Week, the first of all. And here at St. Gertrude's, we too have followed along with Our Lady. We followed our Lord. We saw him raise Lazarus from the dead. We saw Judas money-hungry Judas, compl complaining about Mary Magdalene and what a waste she had committed by pouring out the most expensive perfumes upon our Lord. We saw him plotting against Christ. We saw the kiss of betrayal. What an awful kiss that must have been. We saw our Lord captured, imprisoned, we kept him company in prison here on Holy Thursday into Good Friday. And then on Good Friday, well, we followed him through his passion as the singers sang it. And now our Lord's body has been buried. The tomb is sealed, all have departed, but the enemy keeps watch. He is still at the tomb. And the body of Christ lay quietly in that tomb at rest from all the traumatic events that it had just experienced. That body lay at rest, but the soul at this moment, the soul of Christ, is still busy with the work of his Father. It says that after he died, after he, after he was crucified, died and was buried, that he descended into hell, that is, the hell of limbo. He, beca he became, just as he was our companion in this exile of earth, so also he would go and become the companion 
with those souls who have been in limbo, the limbo of the fathers for so many years. He would go there to console them, to let them know that their time was almost up and that in just a few more days, he would open the gates of heaven to them. What joy must have been theirs? Today I was thinking, as the, the, the church rejoices mightily today, it was a long Lent, wasn't it? Can you remember Ash Wednesday? How long ago it seems now, but it was only 40 or 46 days ago. The ashes and the fastings, and then today the fire and the baptismal water and the mass. But then we see how much Holy Mother Church wishes us to rejoice. The Gloria was intoned and the lights came on and the organ fanfare was played. And then the beautiful Alleluia that slowly crept back into the Mass with the, the threefold Alleluia. Such joy, because why? The battle is over and the victory won. They say that St. Francis de Sales, by the time his life had come to an end, his body was worn out. And when he had given up the ghost, as our Lord did, it says that his was a worn out corpse, but as it lay in state, he, lay, he looked calm and peaceful with no sign of struggle on his face. One author said that he looked as if he entered finally into his rest. One by looking at his body at that moment, one would never have known the pains that he was enduring. They say that his heart was sound, was healthy, but his liver was burned up and one lung had been pierced by a sword and part of the brain was suffused with blood and they found 300 stones in his gallbladder the size of rosary beads which was the result of a constant battle against himself, his anger that he constantly fought to restrain. But now his body lays at rest. I saw it in Annecy, France. It was a beautiful sight. But his soul, his soul lives on. His soul lives in paradise, enjoying the beatific vision while his body awaits the resurrection. Tomorrow, Valde Mane, it says, very early in the morning, our Lord will rise from the dead glorious, giving us all hope in another life and hope for that rest, that peace, that we have so long desired and that we hope one day to earn. May God grant it all to you and may God bless you a happy Easter. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.